Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian Zalman. It's all right. Hey, today I wanted to talk to you guys for just a few minutes on a FAQ that you guys have proposed a lot, which was a hydro versus a belt driven walk behind. You know, I had to think a little bit about this one. Um, takes it back all the way to when I had a couple of walk behinds, which has been a minute. So anyway, I wanted to chime in, just give you guys my two cents in four or five minutes or less and cover that one right here, right now. Make, make, make the ground shake. For me personally, just to shoot you guys straight, if it was me buying it or whether it was new or used, I would uh, invest into a hydro-driven walk-behind unit way more or way before uh, a belt-driven unit. And here's a couple reasons why. Uh, my very first unit was a 48-inch Viking Hydro walk-behind. It was a great mower, it was an Xmark lawnmower, uh, it was a tank, it was 5,000 bucks. I remember like it was yesterday signing on that thing. Uh, it was the first time I think I really ever like took out a line of credit for anything in life besides like maybe my car on my little Hyundai back in the day. And uh, that's when I kind of realized, hey, I'm kind of doing this lawn care thing now, right? And after that, I went and bought my little utility trailer at Tractor Supply, um, did another video on that one, so funny. Um, but, you know, I was really glad, I didn't know anything back then, but I'm really glad that I got stuck with a 48 inch Hydro versus a 48 uh, gear driven. I didn't even know the difference, a belt driven mower, right? Um, and here's the deal, for the 48 inch walk behind, or just all walk behinds, I should say, that are Hydro driven, uh, there is so much less of a learning curve, I guess is the easy way to say it. Whether you're new or experienced, uh, using a hydro, which is just a lever system on the handle, whether it's pistol grip, the ECS, whatever, or uh, the bars you know that are on top, um, there's so much less learning with an infinitely variable transmission of a hydro gear uh, uh, transmission on a lawnmower than a belt-driven system. The thing with a walk behind is that you have so much stuff going on with trying to manage the 48 inch or the 60 inch swath of the mower. You're going around obstacles, you got levers, bells, whistles, all this stuff going on. Uh, and you just have a, a, a lot of moving parts with a, a walk behind unit, just like a standard or zero term. And I think that if you also have to worry about uh, adjusting the transmission, knocking a lever. So if you don't know, there's a lever that knocks left and right, uh, usually with your knee to uh, increase the speed forward, to put the uh, mower in neutral, or to also put it in reverse. And I think with all the stuff that's going on with a walk behind, and again, a lot of us are using them uh, specifically for hills, I think the last thing you wanna worry about is also the transmission and the speed of the units, um, which is really, I would say dangerous, it's just there's a lot of thinking and a lot more um, juggling when you also have to do a, uh, a belt-driven unit with a transmission compared to a hydro. In fact, one thing I've always told a lot of you guys that DM me on Instagram, and I'm always trying to answer your guys' questions, is uh, what is the difference with a sulky, velky, wheelie cart, right? Um, how much more productive and profitable can those be for your mowers? I don't have an exact science here, but I'll tell you what, it's probably 30% faster if you guys have a wheelie cart um, on a hydro uh, or a walk behind it in general than if you were just walking. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you guys run belt driven or hydro? And if you do, do you guys use a wheelie cart? And if you so, let me know how much you guys have noticed your productivity increase because it's pretty significant. I, I'm telling you guys like a friend, I mowed with my 48 inch Viking walk behind for probably three or four years, probably logged 500 to 700 hours on it that didn't have a, an hour meter, but I remember like it was yesterday, I burned through two or three Velkies. They were the Jungle Gym Accessories Velkies, the dual wheel. Uh, those are the ones I ran. I loved them. And, but I remember like it was yesterday, putting a ton of hours on that thing, mowing all day, all night, uh, getting my little business started, humble beginnings, right? Um, but then I remember uh, I took on some fenced in properties and I had to buy a 38 inch uh, Metro X Mark mower and it had the belt driven. And that was the first experience I had with a belt driven system. And I'll be honest with you, I had never used the Velky that it came with uh, for the 38 inch walk behind that was belt driven, gear driven. And I just never felt comfortable with it between all the um, you know, sighting I had to do with my lane and my swath and everything going on and making sure I don't, you know, do something stupid and damage something. The other thing I had to do was juggle this whole transmission back, forth, reverse. Um, I can imagine you can jackknife a Velky or a Sulky really quickly with a belt driven unit because you're just not thinking or you can only think so quick and you got so many moving parts. With a Hydro, you can still use a Velky and Sulky. You can back up, you can maneuver it. There's only one or two things on your mind versus maybe three or four with 
with a belt driven gear driven unit so if you guys are in the market for the two different styles um, if you have to if you're going from like a, a 21 inch push mower or a 30 inch push mower and you're making the jump into a walk behind unit um, that's the very first thing you're trying to do just get into that walk behind whether it's belt driven or hydro because your productivity from a push mower obviously is going to be significant like 50 percent 100 percent better however if you can invest the other 500 750 thousand 1500 bucks from a belt driven to a hydro driven version of that same unit i would encourage you guys to go with the hydro version of that walk behind lawnmower um, after that there's a whole nother um, part of the spectrum where we can talk about going from a hydro uh, walk behind to a standard from a standard to a zero turn um, i think that's kind of the evolution of the productivity uh, timeline for lawnmowers however if you are in the market for a walk behind and you're debating between a hydro and a belt driven for me personally and I can't, i'm telling you what i've got 750 hours probably behind a walk behind i know what it's like i would encourage you guys to go with a hydro driven walk behind before a belt driven one so let me know what you guys think is did you guys get started with a walk behind if so was it a belt driven or a hydro driven if you're still running them which ones do you guys have which ones do you guys prefer uh let me know love to hear your guys' thoughts as well hopefully you guys enjoyed this five minutes or less faq if you guys enjoyed this one definitely uh, check out the rest of the faq playlist if not check out these other videos you guys might enjoy don't forget to subscribe and guys we'll catch you on the next video